Hello, everyone. This is Jim Ogrzynski with the week three lecture video. So I'm beginning the lecture video here in the course units. I'm going to run through a couple of reminders before we get to some content. Once again, uh, the week number two, chapter two um, course unit has the lecture video also the great uh, YouTube video on creating MLA citations and as always a link to the researcher PowerPoint. So uh, so we have the library information and the annotated bibliography with example instructions and also the instructional videos on my expectations for the annotation along with uh, the formatting of the annotated bibliography. So I just want to point that out once again. Uh, if we move over to the course drive folder, I did create a folder for discussion board seven. For those of you who are using a Google Doc, you can drop the link in there. Once again, just to remind everybody about discussion board number eight, the double entry folder is here and a copy of the template that I covered in the screencast video is also available uh, there and toward the end of the week once again the annotated bibliography folder remember the google drive instructions your google doc needs to be in this folder grabbing the link from this folder and submitting to blackboard for an official submission is required so uh the course units is really kind of straightforward i'm going to lead right into the chapter three and I do want to take the time to point out using and citing sources. So I have a, an overview section here about a lecture video I produced for my spring 1102 course. It's long. You might have to parse out the uh, some of the information, move it along a little bit. Uh, the eight, first eight to nine minutes covers the principles of citation. I have a short video here from ML, on MLA style and, and determining a style guide and how to, to construct a works cited page, so our citation. Some interesting information there. Remember, so, and leading into writing in the middle and working with chapter three, and not only are we looking for source information, but what do we do with that source information? We're just not looking for information that everybody knows. We use it to support our argument, our thinking, and the way to work through the thinking of your research topic and some of the information you find is writing in the middle. Not only recording the summary, the paraphrase, or the quote, but really what does it mean to you? How is that source relevant to your particular topic? The purpose in academic writing and using sources is for you to make meaning, to analyze and interpret, all right? And to, in other words, really use that to support your thinking, your original thinking about a topic. And that's how we go about expressing our intellectual capacity and stretching our brains a little bit because we're able to, to come up with a new argument, supporting a new argument in a new way. We, even if we're exploring a topic and we have information, what does that information mean to you? So the idea here is, is that you're, you're writing and you're, and you're telling your audience something new, something interesting. If you're going to write and tell them what they already know, then, you know, you kind of have a tendency then to lose an audience. It's just that simple. They are, I know this. I know. Why am I reading this? So look through the principles of citation, how to introduce sources. I need to know exactly who your speaker is. How do you go about showing your starting and your endpoints? Make sure your quotation marks, if you're using quotes, are accurate. You use some sort of a parenthetical citation to signal the end of your quote. Remember, we're using MLA, and MLA is author and page number. I have examples here for MLA and APA understanding page numbers. If yours, you know, particular source is unpaginated, then you have to figure out a way how you want to go about closing out your source information, especially difficult if it's a paraphrase because you're not using quotes. But what you must do is, is move through the idea of using the author as uh, an endpoint here in a parenthetical. So then the audience knows exactly where your information um, really starts and stops and where your writing picks up. All right, and then here is a cross-reference. I have to be able to cross-reference your sources. 
If I see, for example, a Peroni in text, I need to see a Peroni here on the um, works cited page. Same thing for Dowlin here, Dowlin there. All right, so it's very important that they cross-reference. If you're quoting somebody that's a third party, then you got to do a little bit of extra writing and then use in Peroni's uh, article, uh, Smith states, and then you have to be able to signal exactly where Smith is coming from so I know it's coming from Peroni because if I see a Smith in text and there's no Smith on the works cited, uh, there's going to be a cross-referencing issue. So uh, that is just a brief run through that. I also have those little videos there. So let's get to chapter three, the writing in the middle. And I specifically want to get to the researcher here. So as I said earlier, you know, the power of writing in the middle is just for you to make meaning with your source information. You are having a very a conversation between you and a source. And I say here, don't write to record things, write to make meaning and to follow your own words about a subject to see what you, <clears throat> you have to say about it. It's very important, okay? I wanna know what you have to say. We get information on some of the topics that you have and I can look that up and find out in five minutes, but what do you think about it, okay? What is your thinking and why you chose a topic? Why is it relevant? So the way we work with sources is through attribution. And attribution is naming your speaker, quotation marks, citation, which is a cross-reference. It's all very important. So I wanna make sure that everybody understands how we use sources. So we kind of work through the slides here in this particular um, um, presentation on the re and the uh, slide presentation, just thinking about plagiarism. And it's important for you to label a speaker because uh, you have uh, a situation where I need to know where one starts and where a speaker starts and ends and you begin. That way you're not appropriating any language or words. So plagiarism is really uh, important. And then also you can look in the textbook is really informative on what common knowledge is. And then what everybody's working on is the triad, the paraphrasing, summary, and quotation. Quotes are great. Sometimes putting it in your wor own words as a paraphrase is a little bit more work, but it pays off and it's a little bit more of a seamless reading and writing process. So you might consider that. Summaries are for those long passages where you just want to summarize in instead of trying to jam a lot of large quotes into an essay, all right? So it's really kind of important, all right? So the, the idea here is, is that the PowerPoint runs through the three uh, triad, and you wanna make sure that you end up uh, understanding exactly how to work with those sources. So when I take a look at the double entry notebook uh, assignment, uh, the, the double entry journal, I should say, uh, in a discussion board eight, this weekend, I'll take a look at uh, what exactly um, you're using and how you're working with it and working with your sources and offer a little bit more commentary there. But chapter three is pretty straightforward. I, it's one of the best chapters in, in, in the book, in my mind, and how to work with the words of others. It's really important uh, that you can uh, be able to extract the, the data that you need, but at the same time, be able to make meaning of that data and information that you have, all right? So that's the purpose of uh, chapter three. Some people have really written in a post that they've been able to work through the chapter and it is uh, really beneficial. All right, so if you have any questions about this week's uh, content uh, video or any of the steps uh, about uh, the annotated or double entry, please uh, send me an email. Good luck.